ions, your periodic table, and the chart that has the rows on it. It's important for you to have those out. First step is look at the name of the element. In this instance, we are working with sodium, which is Na. The first thing you do when you look at the element is you're gonna take out your periodic table. Take out your periodic table, you're going to locate sodium. Sodium is element number 11. Sodium is element number 11, and it's in row number one. Look at the top, it has a one at the top. It's in row number one. When you located the row, refer to your chart. Your chart says, group number one, these elements lose one electron. It loses one electron. Sodium always loses one electron. Remember, if you lose something negative, that gives you a positive charge. So if it loses one electron, it also carries a charge of positive one. So your sodium, if you were to name the ion all positive ions, all cations, all positive ions, always, always, always are named this way. They always carry a positive charge. You do not change the name, you just add the word ion afterwards, ion afterwards. So Na carries a charge of positive one. It is simply known as a sodium ion, sodium ion. Let's look at the second example, Mg, which is magnesium. Remember the first step is to locate it on your periodic table. Magnesium is element number 12, right after sodium. It's element number 12, but you'll notice it's in a different column. You look at the top, there's a two at the top. The column is number two. If you'll notice, now go back to your chart, column number two says these elements lose two electrons. So magnesium is similar to sodium because it's positive, but the charge is different. It carries a charge of positive two. It loses twice as many electrons. It has twice as much of a positive charge. So the charge for magnesium is always positive two, always positive two, but the rule still applies. You will simply call it magnesium ion, magnesium ion. The simple rule to simplify this is if your ion is positive, you're just gonna add the word ion afterwards. How do you know it's positive? You locate it on your periodic table. First and foremost, this table that I gave you actually has the charges next to it. So you'll notice magnesium automatically has a charge of positive two at the top. You just call it magnesium ion, that's it. Depending on the role, you'll notice the charge. If it's positive, will always be the name of the element and then ion. Now let's work with my anions, my negative ones. I have three examples. Again, the rule still applies. Let's look at F, which is fluorine. Locate, remember the first step, fluorine, located on my periodic table. You'll notice that is in row number 17, all the way to the right. You'll notice a 17 at the top. Fluorine carries a charge of negative one. So I put it right here, fluorine, negative. If fluorine is negative and it's an anion, my rule is different. All negative ions, all anions, you drop, you drop excuse me, the suffix, and you add I-D-E at the end, I-D-E at the end. So fluorine, when I'm naming ions, just when I'm naming ions, you don't call it fluorine, you call it fluoride, fluoride. You add I-D-E at the end. This is when I'm working with ions. Second example, oxygen, which is O. Again, first step is located on my periodic table. O is in row number 16. All the way to the right, there's a 16 at the top of the row. That means I have a negative charge. It shows you right there, O is negative two. O is negative two. Same concept applies. You drop the suffix, you drop the ending, and you add I-D-E. So it's no longer called oxygen, it's called oxide. Now this periodic table is your friend because as you notice, it's not called oxygen on this table. It actually has a name for you already. It's called oxide. Has a name for you already, already written out, oxide. Let's look at N, which is nitrogen. Nitrogen is element number seven. It's in row 15, row 15. Nitrogen, of course, carries a charge of negative three. You can see it right there on your periodic table. Same concept applies. Nitrogen is also known when you're naming ions as nitride, nitride. So simple rule to condense this. If they are negative ions, they carry a negative charge you add I, D, E to the end of it. So let's look at another element in that same row. Let's look at sulfur, which is element number 16. It's also in row number 16. You notice that sulfur carries a charge of negative two. 
when you are naming it as an ion, you will no longer call it sulfur, you will call it sulfide, sulfide. Let's look at chlorine, element number 17. Chlorine is also in row number 17. It carries a negative charge, no longer chlorine, it is called chloride. And anything that is a negative, once again, any ion that carries a negative charge, which is known as an anion, you drop the ending, you add IDE afterwards. Now, the further right you move on your periodic table, the more metallic the elements are, the further left, or excuse me, the further left you are, uh, the more metallic they are, the further right you are, the less metallic. So metals tend to be towards the left, non-metals are towards the right. Metals, non-metals. In the middle, those are transitioning. We'll talk about the middle later on. The left are metals, the right are non-metals. Once again, if you're looking at your periodic table. If I'm naming positive ones, you just add ion at the end of it. If I'm naming negative ones, you add IDE at the end of it. Now, we can actually put this to work. If you look at your first worksheet, it's a long chart, your first worksheet, and it says monoatomic ions at the top. This is very, very simple. You have four rows, it says element name, element symbol, ion name, ion formula. You, we've already done this, we just haven't written it in a, a chart form. So it gives you all of the element names. So the first one is sodium. We've actually worked with sodium before. Sodium, what is the symbol? Right next to it, you would put its symbol. We already know the symbol for a sodium, that is Na. So where it says element symbol, I'm going to put Na. Then it says ion name, ion name. What you're going to do is you're going to put sodium ion. Remember it's positive, positive means it's just sodium ion. You're gonna locate it on the periodic table, what charge does it have? Sodium has a charge of positive one, therefore all positives just add ion to the end of it. Ion to the end of it. Let's look at the second one, bromine. Number two is bromine. My symbol for bromine is BR, so you're gonna put that where it says element symbol BR. Then it asks you for the ion name. So I'm gonna locate bromine on my periodic table. Bromine on my periodic table, that is element number 35. So it's in row number 17. You locate bromine, element number 35, it's in row number 17. Row number 17 always carries a negative charge. So because it's negative, remember my negative ones, you drop the ending, you add IDE to it. So the name of the ion for bromine is bromide, bromide. Then it asks you for the formula. The formula is simple. For sodium, it would be Na plus. For bromine, it would be R, Br negative. So all you're doing in my formula where it says ion formula is you're rewriting your symbol, but you're adding a charge to it. The charges are given to you on the periodic table. That's very simple. So where it says ion formula, give me the abbreviation or the symbol and add a charge to it, the appropriate charge. All of these can easily be found on your periodic table or if you flip your page over to the front, that chart that tells you every row and what charge it carries, it tells you on both instances which charge to use. This is when you're working with just monoatomic ions, one element at a time. If you've understood this, we can move on over to binary ionic compounds. This is when you combine a positive and a negative, the names are just combined. And it's very simple, but you gotta understand this first. So let me review very simply. An ion has either lost or gained electrons. If it loses an electron, it makes it a positive one, which means it's a cation. If it gains an electron, it means it is a negative one, that is an anion. All cations are named by adding ion at the end of it. All anions are named by changing the ending and adding IDE to the end of it. How do you know if it's a cation or an anion? You refer over to your periodic table. It has the charges for you based on the row. If you don't see the charges, you can also locate that on the chart based on row. It's very simple, it takes some reading, but if you, if you pay attention to this, maybe watch it one more time, reference both the periodic table and your chart, this part will become a lot easier. So the worksheet that goes with this part of the lesson, the left side of my board, is the one that says monoatomic ions at the top, nomenclature worksheet one. That's the one that goes with this on the left side of my board. Remember, if you're looking at your periodic table, you're looking at positive, which is more towards the left side of your periodic table, and then a negative, which is more towards your right side. 
Uh, metals are on the left, non-metals are on the right. Metals are on the left, non-metals are on the right. Transitions are in the middle. We'll talk about those different sections.